Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Marquez Brownlee panels app drama and reviewing the app. Marquez Brownlee is one of the biggest tech YouTubers. He has almost 20 million subscribers and he's gotten really popular over the last year really reviewing very harshly and from a very real just unfiltered standpoint a bunch of different startups that has gotten him a lot of press. I have been watching him for years. I really like him. His reviews are always really detailed and very honest. So this app caused a huge drama because Panels, the wallpaper app, is a really, really poor execution at a first app. And there's a lot of scummy business practices that are baked into the app, which make it really confusing coming from somebody like Marquez, who is known for being so transparent and open and honest in the tech space. So like I mentioned, it is called Panels. It is a wallpaper app in 2024, which is crazy. And it costs $50 a year or $12 a month. And we're just gonna start right there. There are so many different places to get wallpapers on the internet and almost all of them are free. And even if they're not free, they're definitely not $12 a month. And when your subscription is $50 a year or $12 a month, that math makes no sense. I think it's because they expected people to only download it for one month. So instead of getting $50, they could get 12. But it's just, it's where like the scummy business practices start. So Marquez mentioned in his iPhone 16 review video, this is where he announced the app. And he mentioned in this that he's working with independent artists to bring content to the app. So there are artists images and backgrounds in the app. And he said that he was gonna be splitting the profits 50-50. Which scammy business practice number two, the 50-50 split is a bit unclear because of the way that the fee is collected. If it's collected at $50 a year or $12 a month, there's a very large gap in the amount of earning potential you have per customer per year. And we already know that Apple takes a 30% cut on all app transactions. So is that 30% being factored into it? Is it not? Is How is the 50% being calculated? Normally in a marketplace, when you buy something from an artist, you know that the majority of the proceeds are going to that artist. But when this is a subscription base, how does that 50% get calculated? Is it the amount of downloads that one particular artist has? Or does each artist have their own individual deal with Marquez and his partners with panels? Before I continue with all of the different things I find crazy about this, I'm just gonna go into the app really quickly because there's not much to talk about. It is a really simple, rather clunky and unpolished app. The sign-in process asks you to create an account and sign in. It asks for permission to track your device identifier so that way they can serve you ads. It asks for location permissions for some people. You have to accept a privacy policy, which which is really long and lengthy, which for a wallpaper app in a marketplace in general doesn't really make a lot of sense. And the reason why is because if you do not pay for the app, you get served ads. So in this wallpaper experience coming from a really large creator that can bring a lot of eyeballs and a big audience to individual artists, you get served just shitty dropped in ads throughout the feed. And the feed itself is already not great. There's not much content on the app and some people have already roasted it for having just random images or just colors, which makes no sense to pay for just the color burnt orange. But the app itself, the design is not very clear. There's not many artists, so there's not a lot of content. And then the artists that are there are not my particular vibe. And it's really hard to navigate. You have individual wallpapers, and then you also have packs of wallpapers that are part of a collection. But the difference between those is not very clear. And I can't like peek into a pack without just opening it in the first place. Once you find a wallpaper that you're interested in, you then have the ability to download it if you are a free user you have to watch two ads and then you get to download it in a reduced quality and if you're a paid user you don't watch ads and you get it in full quality this really brings me to my third like scammy business point marquez brownlee is a huge youtuber with a really devout audience including me i recently unsubscribed because the whole thing was just so weird and I think ill-timed and ill-planned. He started to defend some of his actions on Twitter. He also addressed it. So there's a little bit of confusion there. But the main part and the whole reason why I'm making this video and reviewing this is why are we making a wallpaper app in 2024? It makes no sense. There is Unsplash and Google Images and a million websites where you can get this content in these images. So creating a specific app that's also a really expensive, relatively basic product does not make a lot of sense. I like don't, I'm so curious what his thinking was in creating this, 
because he said that it took him years to do and he said that he was really proud of it. And everything about it just seems like a quick cash grab, which he is not known for doing. He mentioned in his iPhone 16 video while he was introducing panels that one of the most searched terms is his name or his channel name in wallpapers because he reviews tech and he uses wallpapers in all the different videos. In my head, the first place to go with this app is either to have everything be AI generated with artist input in a really interesting way or work with the artists that have supplied the wallpapers in your videos and create some like huge collection that could be bought just one off and support individual artists in a really clear way. I understand wanting to make a marketplace so that way it grows over time and can expand, but there's a different way to do it and calling out the fact that you are splitting your profits 50-50 with artists makes no sense when you've just created a pretty shitty container to put all of their art into and that's about the only service you really seem to be providing. I mean this just leads me to my final point. This is a relatively short video and it, I'm surprised I'm even making this. My main point with this is MKBHD, his channel, Marquez Brownlee, is known for so many different things. He is known for really high quality videos, really detailed reviews that are relatively honest and straightforward. This is the first digital product that he's created that doesn't really seem to go along with his brand ethos in any way, and people have really picked up on this. He has gotten a ton of flack from it. I have unsubscribed to him because of it. And I hope it's a really quick and easy learning lesson for him and for his team. And the things that he produces in the future will make more sense for his brand and will, and we will get invited on that journey of getting to the final output. The other part of this is the fact that he just quickly announced it in the middle of one of his most likely most viewed videos of this year. So from never hearing it before to all of a sudden it being launched, it also calls into question how involved he was and how much he actually cared about this product. These are just my thoughts. I mean, please, please let me know what you think. I don't even know if most of you have even watched this channel before, but I thought it was interesting enough because it has gotten like widespread press all over the place. So that is my video for this week. I just wanted to get this one out really quickly for you guys. I'm also filming this on my phone for the first time and seeing how I feel about this and figuring out the process because it would make my life a lot easier. So please let me know what you think and if you notice a difference in the quality or if it's better or worse or if you want to see something different from me because I want to like hone in my filming production a little bit better even though I'm probably always going to be filming in my kitchen. So that is it for this week and I will see you guys in my next video.